Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. I'm down at Homebush Olympic Park in Australia for the Frog and Reptile Expo. It's gonna be really interesting to see the difference of reptile shows in Australia as compared to America or even Canada where we've been. You're watching Snake Bites. This is something that you're not going to see anywhere else but in Australia. This is an albino olive python. I tell you what, these guys are incredible and I've seen some pictures of these things, but to actually hold one is a dream come true. I can't tell you how cool this thing is and they're so much bigger than I expected. You guys know as I go around reptile shows, I always try to pick out animals that really catch my eyes and this eastern water dragon is certainly one of them. What's really interesting is here in Australia, they're really common all over the eastern seaboard. What's more interesting is that the males are actually extremely territorial while actually kill any other males that are in their area, but you can find these guys pretty much anywhere, but I can tell you what, they aren't normally this tame and these guys will get about twice as big, just an incredible animal. Obviously, we, what we have here is an Australian frill dragon. These things are so cool. Look at how they just frill up like this. Uh, we have them over in the States, but still, this animal is really spectacular, and I love the way it's displaying like this. Again, you can imagine coming across this as a predator, how it would frill up like that, and it would really scare you away, but uh, it's not scaring me at all. Monitors are really awesome animals, and this one's actually what they call an Argus monitor, or here they'll call them Plains monitors. What's really interesting about these animals is that they actually live in areas with high grass. You'll see pictures of these guys standing up right up on their hind legs and looking over the grasslands to see what they are. And you can tell these guys are a little bit fussy, but, but they're not nearly as mean as, say, the Parentes or something like that. They just kind of huff and puff. There's a little bit of danger, and he's not ripping me up too much, but what an incredible animal. This is a lace monitor, and this is a female. She's basically full grown, but males, again, are very dimorphic, and they'll get up to two meters, which is about twice as long as this animal. These guys live mainly in the trees, and on the east side of the country, this is the phase that you're gonna get. Basically, they're gonna feed on birds and eggs and stuff like that. There's pretty plentiful amount of food for them. What's interesting is these guys have wicked claws, and you definitely don't wanna get bit by something like this. These teeth are much more sharp and much more dangerous than some of the other monitors that we showed, like the Spencers or the Mangroves or something like that. And as you can see, the tail is much longer and much more slender because they're not gonna to have to hold all that water. This animal, you can see, is really tame. And I was actually told a story that around here, when you're out barbecuing or something like that, these guys will actually crawl right up to you and ask for food. So they're actually a beautiful, incredible animal. Here's another monitor that's really cool. These guys are called mangrove monitors, and this is actually the blue phase. What's cool about these guys is they live a lot more in the tree, so you're not gonna find them in the ground like some of these other monitors I've been showing. The downside to that is their claws are really, really sharp, so that when they dig into you, you get ripped up pretty good. But as you can see, these guys are actually pretty tame. These guys in the wild will actually feed mainly on crustaceans, although in captivity, they'll still be rodent eaters. Just kind of a really unique animal, and as you can see, they're not nearly as aggressive as some of the other animals I've shown you guys. These guys are Spencer monitors. They come from the black soil area and they actually come from areas where there's really not much going on other than cracks and crevices. They need to be kept a lot warmer and their belly heat in the areas that they're from actually can get so hot that it'll melt your shoes. And as you can see, the base of these tails are incredibly thick and they can whip you pretty hard, I'm sure. But the fact is, is that they store a lot of their water in because it can go years without water there. One of the really neat things about these monitors, because they come from an area that's so sunny all the time and very little rain, you can see they actually have black, almost like eyeliner, and what that does is actually reduce the glare of the sun so they don't have that sun glaring in their eyes constantly, which obviously could be a problem with eyesight and hunting and so on like that. Something that's unique to this animal.
These guys are probably one of the coolest animals you're ever going to see. These are actually thorny devils. These guys come from like the Alice Spring area, and you're not going to see these guys in any pet collections or anything like that. They actually eat thousands of ants a day, so they're not something that you're going to keep as a pet by any means. And they come from areas that are really arid, so there's hardly any water. And what's really interesting is that any part of the body touches water, it'll actually funnel up, go right through and into its mouth so it can actually drink. And as you can see, there's little appendage on top, and I think that that's maybe a way to kind of uh, think that there's an extra head for predators and stuff like that. But again, with the thorniness of this animal, I don't know too many animals that are going to try to attract something like this. Again, one of the most incredible animals you'll ever see. We see plenty of blue tongue skinks here and there, but what's really interesting about these guys are they're western blue tongue skinks, and they're actually even pretty rare over here, and certainly you're never going to see them over in America. This animal is actually more of a northern animal, and as you can see, the darker animal is going to be a more southern animal. The reason for that is just so that there's more sun absorption, so that they can get that heat. There's really nothing more to it. These guys aren't sexually dimorphic whatsoever, so basically males and females are going to be the same size. And of course, they have their telltale blue tongue, just like any of the other blue tongues. These are one of the rare animals you're going to see at this show or anywhere for this matter. These are actually pygmy spiny tail skinks or in the Gurnia species. This is actually the red phase and these guys will only have one or two babies. They're found out in western Australia where it's really hot. These guys love to climb down into crevices and as you can see with their spiny tail and they'll get down there, they'll blow it up and there's just absolutely no way you can get these guys out. Okay, what I've got here is actually a rough scale python. These guys are incredible and to be honest with you, as you can see this bugger is a little bit high up, but to be honest with you, these are actually one of two snakes in Australia that I've always wanted to handle. The rough scale and the Owen Pellas, and the Owen Pellas are extremely rare. This guy's pretty fired up, and they actually are pretty dark, but when they get uh, into a good mood, <laughs> you can see this guy is awesome. When they get into a good mood, they actually turn more gray. Oh, the bugger just bit himself. We're trying to do this without bleeding too much here, but these guys are so incredible. They're a lot like a carpet python, but as you can see, their attitude's a little bit different, and their scales are just really rough and beaded. To feel this animal is just so incredible. And I tell you, the eyes and the head pattern, it reminds me a little bit of an Angolan python as well. It's almost like if you would cross an Angolan python with a carpet python. That's basically what you'd get. And of course, I'm gonna shed a little bit of blood for you guys today. One of the species of animals that's really blown me away here in Australia have been the blue tongue skinks. I had no idea there were so many color mutations, like this albino that is just absolutely incredible. And these are the eastern variety. They actually have live young. It's probably a year and a half or so away from having babies, but this is a recessive trait. You can see the red eyes, and actually the albino makes that blue tongue a little bit more purple, but truly an incredible animal and one of my favorites I've seen so far. Okay, so I might have lied to you guys when I said the albino blue tongue skink was my favorite mutation. After actually handling this melanistic or solid black blue tongue skink, I tell you what, I've got a new favorite for sure. This thing is just amazing. It's just solid black, so shiny. The eyes are just as black as you can possibly imagine. And with that black, the blue tongue just really, really pops. You guys know that I'm an Australian python knife, and I've been keeping carpet pythons for years and years. When I first heard the first albino carpet python down in Australia and saw a picture, I was blown away. Some of those animals are now in Europe, and some have even made it to North America. But this is the very first one that I've been able to see in person and actually handle. And I'm telling you what, seeing them in person blows away any pictures I've ever seen. So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the show as much as I enjoyed showing you all these incredible Aussie animals. After all, this is the only place in the world you're going to see animals like this. I want to thank everyone at the Australian Frog and Reptile Expo for all our hospitality, as well as all the people we met. You guys are awesome. Till next time, you've been watching Snake Bites.